So let's move on and now talk about the anti-secretory properties of buscopan. So this is quite fascinating. So the um, epithelial lining of the airways is continuously producing mucus. So the epithelial lining of the trachea and the bronchi and the bronchioles, it's producing mucus. And there are little cilia on the epithelial cells that gradually move this mucus upwards. And then it's gradually moved all the way up the respiratory tract through the larynx and then it is swallowed. And this happens all the time and we're not even consciously paying attention to it. Now, in certain individuals with horrific neurological conditions, and the main example would be ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or motor neuron disease. The final part of that process, the swallowing, which brings the mucus out of the larynx and then down the esophagus to go down to the stomach and be digested, that part doesn't work once the condition has progressed badly enough because they no longer have control, any sort of motor control of the muscles needed to produce that swallow. What can then happen is the mucus then can't be cleared out of the larynx and it backs up down the respiratory tract and can potentially result in blocking major airways and major problems with breathing. It's therefore very important as conditions like ALS progress to try and stop this mucus production in these individuals. And buscopan is actually a brilliant drug for doing this. So these secretory cells of the respiratory epithelium, they actually have muscarinic receptors which stimulate them to produce the mucus. And therefore by blocking these muscarinic receptors, you can hugely reduce mucus secretion by the respiratory epithelium. So buscopan has incredibly excellent anti mucus effects. And the word for this, the proper word for this, is we call it an anti-secretory. Uh, so this is another situation where you can see uh, buscopan prescribed to people where you're trying deliberately to stop respiratory secretions. So in people with advanced ALS, you may see them on regular buscopan where they're taking 20 milligrams four times a day. Please do not stop that drug. They are not on it just to relieve abdominal pain, they are probably on it to relieve their respiratory secretions. And if they stop taking that medicine, they may well get huge amounts of mucus being produced that they can't clear from their airways. And it may well end up blocking major airways and causing them to asphyxiate. So overall, buscopan is an excellent drug. It doesn't cure anything, but it is an excellent symptom control drug. And it is usually extremely well tolerated. Most people get no side effects from this drug. They just get the benefit of it. If you do get a few side effects, they're usually things that don't bother people at all. Uh, so they might get a bit of a dry mouth because it also reduces the activity of the salivary glands, which have muscarinic acetylcholine receptors within them and therefore reduces saliva production in the mouth. But that usually isn't something that bothers people who take it. Uh, it might cause a bit of a dry throat because, as we've discussed, it reduces respiratory secretions in your larynx. But yes, overall, I do think buscopan is an excellent drug. I do not infrequently prescribe it, uh, and I would put it up there with paracetamol as an excellent, well-tolerated symptom relief drug. However, there is one big caution that you need to be aware of for buscopan and that is its use in the elderly. And actually, this goes for all drugs in the category of anticholinergics. They have the ability in the elderly to reduce cognition. They can make elderly people less with it, more confused. And some people are even worried that if these drugs are taken long term by elderly people, that they might speed up the dementia process. So be aware of that. Be cautious about prescribing them in elderly people. If you prescribe one to someone who's elderly and then you notice a marked change in their cognition, so they're not as with it or they're floridly confused after you've prescribed it, consider could this be the drug that I've prescribed and consider stopping it and seeing if things return to normal. But overall, just have a higher threshold for prescribing any sort of anticholinergic drug, including buscopan, in anyone over the age of 60.
Indeed, there are a bunch of very famous guidelines for prescribing in elderly patients that were published by some big academic body, and they're called the start and the stop criteria. And the start criteria are a bunch of guidelines for drugs that you should be looking at prescribing in elderly people, uh, or you should be considering, does this elderly person need this drug? Would they benefit from this drug? And the stop criteria are a whole bunch of guidelines of drugs that should be ideally avoided or if a patient's on them, should be, uh, you should try and stop them if possible. Uh, and you can Google the start and stop criteria. They're very interesting to have a read of. But one of the stop criteria is regular anticholinergics. So you're supposed to, if you see an elderly person on a regular anticholinergic, you're supposed to have a look at is this drug really necessary and could we stop it because really it's going to potentially be better for their brain not to be on this drug long term because as I say there is this worry it's still I think speculation it's not categorically proven but there is this worry that they do accelerate the dementia process uh, and we may well see in the next 20 years that that becomes uh, a medical fact proven medical fact but at the moment it's more sort of possible um, so overall, it's a brilliant drug when taken as required occasionally or when taken regularly, but only for a short period of time. Ideally, try to avoid having people on it regularly for long periods of time, especially if that individual is elderly. And as I say, there is a major uh, guideline uh, in geriatric medicine that says that you want to avoid regular anticholinergics in the elderly. So we'll end there. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you've enjoyed it.